Hi, I'm Kevin Hildebrand. I'm Cantor at Concordia Theological Seminary, and we're starting a series of podcasts to present some practical and useful ideas for congregations to use uh, every Sunday. And the first thing I'd like to talk about is singing the Psalms. Um, a question that our students in liturgics class often ask is, how do you know which tone to use when singing a psalm? Uh, for example, there's, there's no uh, particular tone given here in, in the psalm section of, of the hymnal. Uh, there are some previous hymnals like Lutheran Worship or Lutheran Book of Worship that assigned you know, a specific tone to a specific psalm, but it's, it's kind of purposely ambiguous that you don't have to sing tone A to this psalm. It gives you, as, as pastors and church musicians, the flexibility for your own setting and your own congregation to know what would work best for you. Um, that still doesn't quite answer the question of, well, which, which tone do I, I use? Um, and, and to answer that maybe a little better is, is um, I have some information here on the first page of the hymnal before the psalm section begins, their little Roman numeral 26, where we have actually the music of the psalm tones and some explanation about them. And the last sentence on that page says this, any psalm can be sung to any tone. It is best, however, that the tone, which can range from cheerful and bright to somber and austere, be appropriate to the text. And uh, so I think as pastors and church musicians, as you look at each particular psalm, and you look at the character of the text and the content of that psalm, you can help determine which, which tones sort of fall uh, in that, that category for that psalm. And, and for, for my... Uh, explanation is I'll usually say tones A, B, C, and D here on this part of the page are more the cheerful and bright tones and E, F, G, and H are tones that are a little more somber and austere and to choose accordingly to the, the content of the psalm. You know there's three other psalm tones here at the bottom of the page, tones I, J, and K, and those are double tones, meaning uh, whereas these initial tones go through one verse of text to go through the whole uh, musical tone, these require two verses of text to get through the entire uh, tone. For instance, if you're singing Psalm 23 to tone A, you sing, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, and there's verse 1, and you've gone through all the music. But if you're using, for instance, tone I, one of the double tones, you would need to sing verses 1 and 2, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters, and so forth. If learning the Psalms is sort of a new thing that your congregation is doing or is being reintroduced to, it might be better, first of all, to use a limited number of tones, and maybe for an entire season, the entire Epiphany season or Lenten season, say we're just going to use this tone or that tone, tone A or tone E, for example, uh, and maybe save the double tones for when your congregation is a little more familiar with that. One other uh, caveat with the double tones is you need to make sure that there's also a even number of verses that you sing through to get through those double tones. It won't work with an odd number of, of, uh, of verses. Well, another question that uh, we talk about when singing the psalms is, well, how is the psalm actually going to be sung? We could, do we sing it unaccompanied? That's, that's certainly an option. Or we could have instruments accompany that. You could have a piano play along or an organ. Maybe a guitar could uh, pr uh, play appropriate chords to go along with that. That psalm tone, bells might play. And then finally, also the manner of pre uh, presenting the text. Uh, probably the most typical way is having the congregation sing the psalm responsively along with a leader, whether that's one person, a soloist, or a small or large group of people, a vocal ensemble or a choir. And it probably is best uh, to have the leader or the vocal ensemble or choir sing the first verse and then the congregation sings the next verse and we go back and forth. And that way, especially for a congregation that's being reintroduced to this practice of singing the Psalms, they get to hear a good model every other verse. The leader sings it and then the congregation gets a turn. 
Another option, perhaps after a congregation is more familiar with singing the psalms, is to, to divide the congregation in half. You could have left side and right side go back and forth and sing that, that psalm in an antiphonal way. Now, perhaps a, a practical thing for your congregation to do, uh, especially if you're being reintroduced to this practice of psalm singing, is, is with the upcoming season of Advent, uh, to use those psalms of the week uh, for each one of your midweek Advent services. Now, in this particular year, since the fourth Sunday of Advent is December 24th, that means we'll only have three midweek Advent services. So you can see the, uh, the psalms that are assigned for these uh, weeks of Advent coming up, and um, I would uh, suggest you, you try using those at, at your, your midweek services. And perhaps because there's only three weeks, three psalms, um, maybe limit yourselves to just one tone for those three weeks. Maybe Psalm Tone A or Psalm Tone B uh, would be a suggestion. Well, we hope some of these ideas might be helpful for you and your congregation and that it enriches uh, the way you get to sing the church's song. Thanks.